Pike County Physical Court is called to order. Madam Clerk, have a roll call. The members, please. Judge Rutherford. Present. Master Anderson. Here. Master Johnson. Present. Master Murphy. Here. Master Robinson. Here. Master Dotson. Here. And Master Hare. Here. We have a quorum. We now have Pledge of Allegiance led by Magistrate Murphy, a veteran. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. You have a copy of the minutes of August 20. Uh, Jeannie and I have gone over those, found them to be correct. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Have a motion, Master Johnson, have a second. Have a second. Have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Yes. We have some Pike County ambassadors, really. Uh, all of us are ambassadors that uh, are citizens of this county, but there are special occasions when People shine and are able to go uh, outside the uh, boundaries of Pike County and showcase Pike County. I remember and hearing Gov former Governor Patton speak many times, and I've said this time and time again, that we can do anything that we want to do. Our young people can do that here, and that we have the ability to do anything and be anything we want to be. And today, I think we've got a, a, a good example of that. And that, and we, we have uh, with us today, and I would, I would like if, if, if you would come around to the podium, because you, you might, you, you're going to be able to introduce some of those in a, in a few minutes, because this is our 4-H uh, Pike County people that have brought honor to this county and to their families and to their classmates. Uh, so it is, and a lot of work has gone into this. A lot of work has gone on with the staff at the Extension Office and, uh, and with their teachers, I presume, and then with their parents at home. So uh, I, wanna, I wanna bring up first uh, Isabella Van Hoos, if she is present, if she would, she would come up. Judge, uh, I do not see Isabella um, in the courtroom I don't think she was able to come this evening but she was uh, a champion she goes to uh, Pikeville High School she's a champion in photography and I don't know if you uh, have any uh, knowledge of this but it's a very tough contest not only did she get a blue ribbon but she was a champion in her class champion and I'll be glad to share this recognition with Isabella so let's give her a round of applause even though she wasn't able to come Next we have uh, uh, Dawson Mullins of Dorton. Uh, uh, Dawson, Dawson, yeah, Dawson, he's here. Come, come around, stand right there. Uh, I saw you up here a while ago, you and Chick Johnson, and I was wondering what in the world was going on, but now I know. Uh, go right ahead. Uh, well, Dawson exhibited a project on electricity, and his project got a blue ribbon on the county. Also, um, it was representing our county at the Kentucky State Fair. And he not only got a blue there, but he is class champion in his electricity project. So let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Next we have, uh, coming up would be- uh, Nate Roberts. Nate Roberts. Nate, would you come around? Just to stand, stand right up there. I know you can tell you're not backwards. <laughs> that uh, go right ahead. Uh, Nate project, nature right, project was electricity as well. Is that right? Woodwork, electricity. That's what I thought. And his project went down again. We uh, we had a county competition, and his was the best in the county, and went on to the state fair. And of all those at the state fair from the different counties, which there are 120. His was a class champion in that division, so let's give him a, a round of applause. 
Thank you. The next one we have is Nancy Maynard. Hi, Nancy. Oh, we're proud of you, Nancy. Go right ahead, please. Uh, Nancy is a veteran 4-H'er. This makes about eight years for her being in 4-H. She went to the state fair, and they had a rapid recall contest on chickens, believe it or not. And uh, this animal science is a great way to learn about biology. And she will be representing our state, not just our county, but our state, at the National Livestock Show coming up in Louisville. So we're getting ready to train for that. So let's give Nancy a round of applause. <laughs> and is Cody here? Next we have from Belfry High School. That's uh... Uh, Cody is actually a Belfry High alum. And I guess he got delayed in traffic. He was on his way. So, Judge, we may want to delay that to the end. But uh, Cody Phillips is not only a champion uh, at the state fair in a judging contest, he was re uh, elected to be the state. Here he is, by the way. Good <laughs> try. I mean, talk about making a grand entrance. This is Cody Phillips. There, there, Come there, on up there, front, there, Cody. Phillips. And he's got his. Um, 4-H suit on, his jacket, and this means he's one of four leaders in the state of Kentucky. Go up to the now, front Judge and Hayes, he front didn't win the Masters, but he's got his green jacket on. Okay. And, and Cody, is, is, I think he's down to Transylvania now. Is that correct? You're a freshman at Transylvania. Well, folks, a Pike County ambassador, what more could you ask? He just keeps adding to uh, Pike County and Belfry, and of course, a lot of people down that way knows where Belfry is, uh, down around Lexington. Go right ahead and. Okay, so Cody is uh, was a it's a really tough election. He has about 600 youth of his peers. He had to give up and give a speech, judge like you did when you were uh, running for office, and campaign. And they actually voted, and he was elected to be our state treasurer. He is uh, goes across the state. He is. He actually was at the state fair as an ambassador, so congratulations to Cody for not only being a state champion, but also for being a Kentucky State Officer of 4-H. Let's give him a round of applause. And, and let me say this, he, he's Magistrate Harris's neighbor, Forest Hills. <laughs> he is his uh, neighbor at Forest Hills, so congratulations, right, right. Cody. <laughs> Uh, Judge Hayes, would you read the resolution? And a copy of that resolution goes to all these young people to honor you. Something you can keep, something you can be proud of. Judge Hayes. The Pike County government hereby recognizes and honors outstanding young Pike County 4-H participants. Whereas Nancy Mannard won a state championship in the Senior 4-H Avian Bowl at the Kentucky State Fair. She is the daughter of Carol Thompson of Canada, attends Belfry School, and will represent Kentucky during the National Livestock Show in Louisville. And whereas Dawson Mullins of Dorton School won a blue ribbon and a state championship on his 4-H uh, electricity project, this young scientist exhibited an original design which was a basic electronic circuit with solid state components. Dawson is the son of Jody Collins and Randall Mullins of Dorton. And whereas Cody Phillips, a freshman at Transylvania University, uh, competed recently at the Kentucky State Fair and won a championship in the 4-H poultry contest, Cody was also elected to be the Kentucky 4-H state treasurer. A graduate of Belfry High School, he is the son of Mary Maynard of Forest Hills and Tommy Phillips of Ransom. His grandparents are Ron and Joetta Maynard of Hardy and Randy and Sarah Goff of Canada. To win the honor of being elected Kentucky 4-H State Treasurer, Cody had to campaign and give a speech to 600 of his peers at the University of Kentucky during the 4-H team conference. And whereas Nate Roberts received a blue ribbon as well as a championship ribbon, on his 4-H electricity project at the Kentucky State Fair. Nate is the son of Randy and Gina Roberts of Pikeville and attended Mullen School. And whereas Isabel Van Hoos is a Kentucky State Fair champion in 4-H photography with five 
uh, photograph she had exhibited as a project. A student of Pikeville, Isabella is the daughter of Josh and April Van Hoos of Pikeville. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Pike County Physical Court to recognize and honor these worthy young Pike Countyans for their contributions in 4-H. Witness this by hand the third day of September 2013 by the Honorable Wayne T. Rutherford, Pike County Judge Executive, and that will be signed also uh, by all of the magistrates of this court. If we could have the uh, champions come up front. While they're uh, stepping forward, I would like to comment that the first uh, state president of 4-H was Gifford Varney. If any of you know him from over in Pond Creek area, he was the first state president of Kentucky 4-H uh, a good while ago. So he's passed on, but he always um, remembered those days as well. <laughs> Judge, I'll just say while everybody is going back to their seats how proud I am to have uh, two people from my area of uh, Excel in uh, the 4-H uh, program it is a great program and Gifford Varney was a uh, was a, a fine man that that uh, came from a family of, uh, of farmers and, and we don't have a lot of that in Pike County there's not a lot of farming in Pike County so um, for 4-H uh, to be as uh, as as successful as it's been and continued on all these years in Pike County we appreciate the work that you've done and the work that those that came uh, those that came before you and a special congratulations to those that are uh, that are here today representing our county very well. It's always nice to see uh, our county excel in, uh, in, in things that are so positive, just like uh, 4-H. So thank, thank you, you and congratulations, and I'll be happy to make the motion we adopt the resolution. I have a motion to have a second. Have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Okay. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Yes. Yes. He's not here. District one had two. Well, that may be the same. Yeah. Uh, uh, Master Harris, I can remember when I was in the third or fourth grade, and they had the 4-H parade in town, and the street used to run opposite of what it does today, Chick. It run the other way. Traffic went that way. And I looked up at this big courthouse and thought that's the biggest building I've ever seen in my life, and it was. Having no idea that the, what the Lord had for me in future years. Uh, not realizing that he had for me to, to be the, a leader of Pike County. I had no concept of that. I just thought as a young boy, gosh, what a big place. And that's our government, and wondered, Carl, what, what was going on here and here all these years that I've had the opportunity and been blessed to be part of this government here in this very building that awed me as a very young child. Does any other magistrate have anything to say uh, about our young people that was in their district? Uh, Magistrate Anderson, I think you had two from the Mullen School. Yeah, I did, Judge. And we uh, we are actually Hillen just told me about taking a picture. We already we've already taken a picture. I don't know if they wanted to do one, do, do another one, or have, have her. It's fine with me. However, they wanted to, whatever they wanted to do. Yeah, go around and she'll come up there, and we'll if they don't have a camera, we'll take a picture for you. I've got I've got a camera. Go around. And you get got a camera? Okay. Just go around and get it. And Chick, you've already had him up here for your picture. So uh, you, that family, you can make a statement while he's walking down there. Where do you go? Uh, uh, from your district. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's go ahead and get you a picture with him and. <laughs>
the other one was from his district too. But then what? Was I think Chris has two. Okay, Chris, get you a picture with him. With you or two. What's his name? There you go. I did it. Now let me ask, how many people in here belong to the 4-H when you're growing up? Look at that. About everybody in here that belong to them. Go right ahead. Now, I do want to recognize the families that came with us this evening because, you know, without family backing them, they wouldn't have gone this far. So let's give, if you would please stand, family members. Let's give them a round of applause. In addition to that, there is a tremendous support in this county for our program that UK offers for our young people and through the school system. So if you have a chance, you might want to say thank you to the school system because they also cooperate with us very well. Uh, as a member of the Extension Board, I, I certainly too would want to thank the Pike County Board of Education for mm -hmm. their cooperation. Uh, the, the Extension Office is I don't miss a meeting, as you know. No, Jenny, you do not. Make sure that I don't get scheduled nothing that, that I can't attend those meetings because it's a very essential part of the, of, as these young people grow up, to have, have you all who are so dedicated. And I do want to say, Judge, that the Pipeville City School is now on board. They've got the message, and they've I've gone full force with 4-H as well. Well, th thank you for the job you do, too. Next we have, and, and, uh, and boy, time goes on. Um, and as I look at this and the years, uh, Johnny Slusher. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to miss Johnny. I saw him usually every morning. I park to come to work <laughs> and walk the hill. Normally, I, I see Johnny. But uh, things don't make the same, they don't stay the same. But I found Johnny Slusher to be an, uh, uh, to be an excellent employee and, and a credit to, to the job of Pike County Deputy Jailer. Johnny is uh, he's very dedicated to the job. I know in the conversations that I've had with him in regard to, to his duties, and it is a great uh, it's for me to have the opportunity today to, to have him come before this court so that he could be honored in this way for his, his uh, years of service. And folks, it's 28 years. Just imagine of the dedication and changes that's happened in this county in 28 years that he has given his time. And, uh, so I would, I'd like to now to, and Mr. Jailer, if you would come around the microphone, I'd like for you to, to, to talk about your employee. And, uh, and Johnny, I'd like for, for you and your wife uh, to come up and we'll make a presentation to you for, for uh, get a picture with you. Uh, for it, and Mr. Jailer, go right ahead. Judge Court, thank you. Um, as you said, he was an excellent employee. Uh, he spent over half of that 28 years over there with me. So, you know, he was very dependable, reliable. Uh, anything you asked him to do, you didn't have to second guess him, it got done. Uh, I, w I wish him the best and, you know, if there's anything we can ever do for you, Johnny, just let us know. Thank you.
Judge Hayes, would you read the resolution? <laughs> yes, Judge, and before I read it, you know, I, I don't know what his rank was over there in the jail. I called him General Slusher. I promoted him all the way to the top. But anyway, this is a... <laughs> this is a resolution of the Pike County Fiscal Court uh, recognizing and honoring Johnny Slusher uh, for distinguished service to the people of Pike County, whereas Johnny Slusher served with honor and distinction as a faithful employee of the Pike County Detention Center judge for 28 years, and whereas Johnny Slusher is to be commended for this dedication and hard work over the years and for his contributions uh, to the people of Pike County and to the public good, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Pike County Physical Court that this body recognizes Johnny Slusher for his distinguished service to the people of Pike County, Kentucky, and wishes him many happy years and a prosperous future to come in his retirement. Witness this our hands, this the third day of September, 2013, and executed by the judge executive, the Pike County attorney, and the magistrate of each of the six magistrate districts. Let's give Johnny Slusher a hand. I have a motion to, motion to adopt that. Have a motion. 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 Have a second. Have a second, Master Johnson. Have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Reese. Yes. Next, we have a fella who. Uh, TJ. We're going to miss also when we need something. We always uh, call downstairs. We, we ask for this fellow in the clerk's office. Uh, his father worked for the Pike County government for many years. Uh, Don Babin. Don, glad to see you here with us today. And it's, a, it's an honor for me to uh, bring you before this body and to honor you for your many years of service. I think you told me last week it was around 18 years or something like that. But, uh, but you have been faithful. You have been there for Lee and Pearl and her staff when you was needed. I, I know that the, in past elections that we worry about uh, whether or not the machines are working. You also had that duty and where the voting machines was working and, and uh, and we always got through the elections. I know Fuzzy is election officer, Lee is election officers, and others. And we always make it through the elections. And when it's over with, we take a sigh of relief, and it's, it's Don Bevan. And uh, I, I see his son sitting back there behind him with a smile on his face, and, and I'm sure he's, he's proud of his dad. And, uh, and that family is an old line Pike County family, the Bevins family. And uh, Don, we just want to thank you. And if we have anybody from the clerk's office who wants to come around the microphone, you can do that. Uh, uh, and, but Don, we know what you've meant to Lee and Pearl uh, Elliott in the years that, that she's been there and then uh, those who preceded her. But you have been a fixture in that office. You, uh, you are a walking library when it comes to the election, uh, how elections are set up. And it is, uh, it, it, is, uh, it is just an honor for me. Mr. Casey, come around, and I know that you have a, a relationship with Don. And Absolutely. Uh, Don, um, Don knows he's, he's a great employee. Honestly, we're going to miss him, but he's not going to leave. I don't know if you know it, Judge. He's going to stay on with us and continue to do all the election stuff. Uh, we worked out a deal with him, and he's going to—he's leaving us at the clerk's office full time. But he's also going to also be around, and take care of all the election stuff as previous. So the duties have changed a little bit, but he ain't left us yet, and he can't get rid of us that quick. Uh, well, I can breathe a sigh of relief, and I'm sure the election commissioners can. Yeah, <laughs> I'm he, sure he's going to continue can. all those duties he's working be with the elections on as our, previously. At election time. But uh, Don's been around a long time. Uh, him and Lillian goes way, way back all those years. And 
I can tell you every single election, Don is one of the major parts of all elections here in Pike County. No doubt about that. And he does a wonderful job. And uh, I tell you, my wife will let him go. Whenever he decided to retire, I said, you got to stay with the elections no matter what. And he has agreed to come back and continue to do that for all of us and for Pike County. Thank you. Judge Hayes, would you read the resolution, please? I will, Judge. If a uh, point of personal privilege, I, I've got to say about Don. Uh, uh, Fuzzy, so, come, Fuzzy wanted to have the election commissioner. Well, what's he, he while he's getting something. to the mic, let me say this. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the great happy experiences of my life was eating uh, uh, those good meals at that groaning table of Troy Bevins up at uh, Phyllis, uh, Leo, and Grapevine Creek. Uh, uh, what great hospitality, what great love and family fellowship in the Bevins household. And, uh, well, we miss Troy, and, uh, uh, but we still got Don. And, Don, I, I want just to personally thank you, Fuzzy Sheriff Kazee. Fuzzy is the election commissioner, and he knows you the know, way I've that known, been. I've known John a, a long time. I knew when he was a game warden. But anyway, he was like his father. He would literally... You knew his father, Troy. He would literally uh, take off his shirt if somebody needed it. And Troy loaned me a car. I didn't have a car, so Troy loaned me a car. Uh, I used it about a month and uh, didn't have a car. So anyway, Troy came back one day and said, Fuzzy, could I borrow my car? <laughs> it's an old mobile. Anyway, Troy was that kind of a per person. And... Uh, John's mother would always have good meals. Judge, you and I have eaten up there many times. What Judge and Hayes she was a great to. cook, and uh, Troy would always be there. But anyway, we appreciated those days, and uh, we appreciate you, Don, very much. And you're sort of like your father, but uh, you would take your shirt off if, Somebody needed it. I appreciate that, Don. Thank you very much, Judge. Thank you. Judge Hayes. Hey. Good. Leo. Go right ahead, Leo. Yeah, I just wanted to say a couple things. Uh, Don was raised on a grapevine over there, and just a little bit older than me, but I'm proud to say I've known him as far back as I can remember. He's been a good pillar in the communities, and his son there, and and his granddaughters, they all play sports with my granddaughters and things, but proud to know you, Don, and I hope you stick around a long time. You know, Judge, as everybody was talking about Troy and Don, I, I was reminded of the old saying that the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. And uh, with that, I'll read this resolution, if, if I may, Judge. Resolution of the Pike County Fiscal Court recognizing and honoring Don Bevins for distinguished service to the people of Pike County. Whereas Don Bevins served with honor and distinction uh, as a faithful employee for many years in the office of the Pike County Clerk, and whereas Don Bevins is to be commended for his dedication and hard work over the years and for his contributions to the people of Pike County and to the public good, now therefore be it resolved by the Pike County Fiscal Court that this body recognizes Don Bevins for distinguished service to the people of Pike County, Kentucky, and wishes him many happy years and a prosperous future to come in his retirement. Witness this our hands, this the third day of September, 2013, and executed by the Judge Executive, the Pike County Attorney, and each uh, magistrate of the six magisterial districts. Let's give Don Bevins a hand, please, for his service. Yeah. 
what he's saying. Uh, so we don't need them. I thought we did now. Okay, that's the word. Okay, he said he could modify. And he said he could modify. Them. Yeah. Oh well, that's what you call getting a pig in a poke. Yeah. I don't guess I have to worry about going after any more. <laughs> it's a good thing we only got one. I know. I like having your pig in a poke. You know that? Hmm? I like having your meal in a poke. <laughs> pig in a poke, I mean. He's talking about you, Rob. They can't. They can't. Big city with a judge. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Is that Lee and Pearl Ellick sitting mm -hmm. back there? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, she's aged this last time I seen her. Yeah, I think. I like this. I like this. Hello? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm there. Okay. All right. She's going to try it with me. I'm going to try it with you. Mom, you break her pillow. Leo, we need a motion. Motion, Magistrate Murphy, have a second. Magistrate Robinson, have a roll call vote, please. Magistrate Anderson? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Murphy? Yes. Magistrate Robinson? Yes. Magistrate Dotson? Yes. Magistrate Harris? Yes. Judge Rutherford? Yes. I have a short update, but I, I, I detect <laughs> we have a little bit of problems, and I can't see that. So I don't know how, how this will go, TJ, in regard to the, do you have it listed in order? It's very short, so I might add that. You can't tell with this technology when it's not going to work. <laughs> Just pull it up on the screen and I'll, I'll uh, go through it as I see it come up on the screen. I had that put on there today, Jeannie. You don't have the golf course pictures up there? We have a we have a vac we have two vacancies on the golf course. I have one to recommend to you today, and it's one it's one of ours, fellow that's here. Uh, and we have a vacancy on the golf course. John Paul Runyons has been in not good health, not been able to attend the meetings, and we're all aware of Jack Sykes, who has been the caretaker and the, uh, did everything at the golf course, is, is no longer affiliated with the golf course because of health problems, and they've been having trouble getting a quorum. So we're trying to get a board, and we know that they have some major flooding problems over there, we're going to have to do oversight. I'm talking about the physical court, and my office is going to have to do the oversight on the golf course in the future. So what we're trying to do is get a board where they can get a quorum and where they can, can actually take a part and run the golf course. And I want to recommend Frank Hatcher as to be a member of, of, the, of the golf board. And uh, I've talked to Frank. He'll be glad to give his time and volunteer to do that. 
we have a beautiful golf course over there. We, we, we know that. And we're getting ready to have a, 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 a ribbon cutting over there. Has that date been set, Jeannie? Well, we need it set just as soon as we, we can. And uh, we need to get that set. But I, I recommend Frank Hatcher for that appointment. Uh, are there any questions in regard to that or any statement any of the magistrates want to make? Judge, I'll second your recommendation. Uh, we have a second by Magistrate Anderson. We have a roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Magistrate Anderson? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Murphy? Yes. Magistrate Robinson? Yes. Magistrate Dotson? Yes. Magistrate Harris? Yes. Judge Ruth? <laughs> Frank, you did well. You didn't get a no vote. <laughs> Next is coming up is the... Uh, Renaming of the Justice Building. The uh, AOC has said that they are, they're going to pay for taking their name off of that, which is Justice Building. And then we have, uh, w we need to put something on the building. So uh, we don't need anything long, but we know that it's a detention center, Pike County Detention Center. And we know now, as Judge Hayes said the other day, well, what it is is a courthouse annex. So I don't particularly have uh, a, to even want to name it myself, if anybody can come up with anything better, but I thought it could be a detention center and courthouse annex. Uh, I don't know of anything else, but, uh, but the uh, AOC has taken justice off of it, and then we need something. I'm like they said at the office today, like Roland said, if anybody wants to know how to, what that building is over there, go over there to the jail. <laughs> and that's the way I do when somebody wants direction. Everybody knows where the jail is, Magistrate Robbins. <laughs> but uh, what is your pleasure in regard to that facility? Judge, I'd like to see if the court would uh, just maybe name it uh, after you. You've named everything else. No, I don't want, don't want my name on anything. Maybe we can get your name over there. I don't want my name on nothing. Well, I've tried. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, All I want you to do is name a drain pipe after me. See, I'm trying to name a building after you. Uh, <laughs> I understand. Are there any, any other, anybody? I anybody think, Judge, I, any? I think I'd like to have a, a court meeting to think about it rather than. Okay, uh, let's pass I, it. I mean, I have a meeting and figure it out. Something that's going to stick with the building for eternity. This I is think. the building, justice building out back. This one is the judicial building. As a matter of fact, I thought it looked good if you haven't seen the, the letters that have gone up on this building. It looked great. It's on the front of it. Judge, its uh, formal name right now is the Hall of Justice. Well, it, it doesn't have any more court systems in it, and uh, it's on the it's on the top of it. That, that will be removed, and uh, so we'll pass it to the next court meeting. If you got any other recommendations, give them to Jeannie, and we'll bring it up to the next court meeting. Next is the Hatfield McCoy Heritage Days uh, to be the first festival they've had. As you know, they geared it up to the city park. That's where the stage was in the park, and they had a stage at the Expo Center. And to be the first year, fine. I understand that uh, on, on Saturday, was it Saturday? They had a pretty far crowd. But this is going to grow in future years. And this year, I want to commend the Pike County Tourism and also the City Tourism and the Chamber, who this year who put this festival on for the first year. Now after that, as this court knows, we put together with the city a board that will operate this festival. Uh, I would think that that board would look at a different date in the future, which would not be on a holiday. And uh, we will, we'll, we'll probably have a meeting for too long and get organized and start talking about future years. Uh, I think that we, uh, we know that uh, we we even appointed a Hatfield and McCoy on that board. And Hillman Dotson and myself are members of that uh, uh, committee. And uh, the uh, mayor and a city commissioner of Pikeville and two from 
the chamber, the southeast chamber, the regional chamber, and two from the Tug Fork chamber. But uh, then we got the fall horse ride coming up, which is September 27th and 28th. And uh, what a time that is, one of the most beautiful rides they are. And I think you've got some pictures here of, the, uh, of that horse ride. It is absolutely beautiful back in those mountains uh, of Fish Trap Lake on the other side. And next we have, and we have an office in the courthouse of the National Guard Recruitment Office. And uh, their telephone number, do we have it here? today, Jeannie, so we can give out their telephone number. But uh, we need to get their telephone number, and the next meeting we have, we'll have it up so that uh, when you need them, you can call. <coughs> they work out of this office. They work Eastern Kentucky out of this office. We know what the National Guard has meant to this country in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we know what they mean when we have a disaster here. So certainly we're glad to have him here. And I've got good news for you, and I don't have the letter before me. Dan, if you can get it for me. <coughs> or TJ's got one here, Dan. But uh, Hillman, we got good news today. In the mail today, we got the approval. Uh, ben, and I have another letter, Jeannie, that you had for me that we, that Mr. Here it is, G. Roger Rife, Chairman of the Buck County Board of Supervisors and myself sent a letter on August the 29th to, to Mr. Mormon, the president of Norfolk Southern. And we, we asked for assistance. How long has it been, Hillman? Two years since we had the groundbreaking on that, on that over there? That has been. And, and we decided that <coughs> when they told us that, uh, that they couldn't get approval from the railroad company I, uh, the city. I called the county attorney up at Grundy, Roland's friend, and uh, talked to him. And Lee Morrissey said, uh, let's prepare a letter. I said, well, let's write him. He said, let's both of us sign it. He said, no, the county administrator signed it. county administrator was on vacation, so they got uh, Roger Rife, chairman of the Buck County Board of Supervisors, and we both signed a letter to President Mormon of the Norfolk Southern. And as Charles Carlton can tell you, we we have worked with President Mormon. He's been great to work with this county. And and believe it or not, he passed this on down to Mike Wheeler, Vice President of Engineering. And we got the letter today, and it said that uh, Lee Morrissey had been notified to move on with the project, go ahead and let it, and to get it done. Folks, this is, this is Unbelievable, we got a national award on this. This is a legislature in the state of Virginia passed an act of spending money in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and Pike County to get 88 families out of Virginia that had no way out other through a culvert into Pike County, Kentucky. And they had to come and get those children from those 88 families, haul them into Virginia to school when they could get through the culvert. This changes that, makes it safer, and we all know about what happened. We know that it was delayed one time because there was a murder involved in this. Somebody could probably write a story about this crossing because it's so unusual of one state legislature voting money to be spent. A delegate Moorefield introduced it in the House of Representatives, and a Senator Puckett introduced it in the House in the Senate in the Commonwealth of Virginia in Richmond. And when Delegate Moorefield, when that bill come up on the floor for a vote, the place was laughter, wanting to spend money in another state. He had done his homework, him and, and, and Senator Puckett, and the Speaker of the House said, wait a minute, you all don't understand we have Virginians who've been isolated since, since Virginia gave part of their state to the Commonwealth of Kentucky. That long, all those years, these people has had that hardship. With this crossing they've got down there, Hillman Dotson knows, he's worked on it. Many of you in here have been involved in it. The county attorney's office has worked tirelessly in it. Roland has spent hours over the last two years or longer. But now we, we finally 
got, a, got back and got the approval. So now that that will be done over there, and it's, it's a long time in coming. Hillman, if you want to make a statement of it, you can in regard to, to the letter we got today. Yeah, I was tickled to death to see it happen. And matter of fact, me and some of the residents had planned on going to a meeting up at uh, Grundy at one of their their council meetings and uh, find out where we were on this project. And uh, I'm glad now that uh, we can tell them that it's uh, going to be moving on and, and maybe get it done probably uh, uh, they might get that done before the weather gets too bad because it's not going to be a real big job to do. That's right. But I thank you for you, uh, you and your staff uh, keeping this going. And and uh, like I say, we've been three or four years, you know, working right. on this. We, we when you first come in office, office, you know, we went over and and talked about it. Thank you. Dan, what else do you have on here? No, did we have the two bridges that was completed? We, Hillman, I think we had two bridges that was completed in your district, and uh, you you might speak to that. They was completed, and the hatch is here. And speak to that while I walk back around and get my seat. Well, Judge, it was uh, two well-needed bridges. One was up at Scott Fork, and one was over at uh, Joe's Creek, and it was that uh, state funding that we applied for, and, and it's a 75-25 uh, match. Or was it 90-10, Jeannie? 90, uh, John, was it 90-10, wasn't it? We got 47,000. You have to pay about 15 or 16,000. Well, they call it a 90-10, I think. 80-20. But anyway, we got it done. And uh, I think, you know, it, uh, these people appreciate it. The people up in uh, Scott Fork, Judge, hadn't complained or hadn't asked for a bridge, but it was... Uh, Probably uh, one of the worst bridges that we had, wasn't it, Frank, in the area to travel. What we had done broke, and it was sinking down. And, and the one up at uh, Joe's Creek, it was, uh, and, and it, they, they looked really good. I thought Daniel might have got some pictures of them. But, uh, but I think, you know, that uh, you'd be proud of them, and the people would too. So thank you. Next, we have awarding a bid. You got any bids, Mr. Stacy? Master Trolled Work. Motion, Master Anderson, have a second. Yes. Have a second, Master Robinson, have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson? Yes. Master Johnson? Yes. Master Murphy? Yes. Master Robinson? Yes. Master Dodson? Yes. Master Harris? Yes. Judge Rutherford? Yes. Master comments, Master Anderson? Judge, just one um, couple quick things. Uh, we're doing some, some pothole patching, cutting trees, ditches spooled, so if there's anybody that calls in to your office or uh, if anybody's watching on Pike TV and needs anything done, you know, give us a call. We're, uh, we've been really busy lately, and uh, we've had had a lot of requests. Actually, we've had some people come by the magistrate's office and just dropped off some notes and wanting a few things done. So if there's anybody out there in the in the district that needs something done, just give us a call. Well, let me say that Bobby Mullins and the people on Big Branch are tickled to death about the work that was done over on that. <clears throat> Yeah, that was needed for some oh, time. Yeah, it, was, it was very bad. Yeah, and I think they're, you know, we, we had some... Uh, uh, we've been kind of busy uh, on some other issues, but I, we we had thought we were maybe going to get some some state money to get that fixed. But I, but I do th speaking of that, I think we do we have some more flex money. I think that we we need to apply for for this fiscal year. I approached uh, the district engineer, Master Anderson, about taking that road into state system. See, it leaves the state road, and it became a county road. The reason it was a county road. The, the coal operators built the road. Right. Used to be down where Bobby lives, up to Holland, and they gave the, gave the road to the county instead of the state. That ought to be a state road, like they got a, through Low Gap, and you get over there and you hit a state road from down where you cut up into to Johns Creek. Right. All and I think up. they're going to replace that bridge, too, if I'm not mistaken. I think that the leading might even be coming up pretty soon. So if anybody ask about it, I, th I think the, I think that's going to happen probably this year. It's my understanding. I haven't spoken to them in a couple of months, but I think they were, that was on the on their to do list. That's all I have. Master Johnson, Judge, uh, <coughs> glad to see all these people here tonight. 
I was in 4-H trying a little bitty fella and up in Marshall Branch ahead of Long Fork from 4-H Club to come up there and make our little things and everything. The teacher turned us out about 12 o'clock let's play the rest of the day. It was one of the happiest days of your life. <laughs> That's Thanks about all much. I got, Joe. And uh, our crew's been working hard, you know, getting down a little asphalt, patching here and there with what little we got, but uh, they've been doing a good job. Okay. Master Robinson, Magistrate uh, Dobson. Judge, I'd like to say that uh, the Hatfield-McCoy play went real well. You know, I think it's over for the season. And they had a had a meeting there and, and uh, with uh, Rio and some of the uh, – ones that done the ribbon cutting, you know, about years ago, and and uh, I think they were well pleased with it, but, you know, the, the theater is still going to be in process of doing other shows uh, throughout the, the warm weather, what we've got left of it, but uh, the uh, something that we can really be proud of, and the geocaching, I think it went real well. Uh, they had it over at Blackberry at the... Uh, at the Senior Citizen Center. Carl, did everything work out good for y'all over there on that? I spoke to our center director today, Linda Noll, and she said it was a success. They had over, I think she said it was around 215, between 215 and 230 people there. And what they done, Judge, the seniors got together and cooked and sold uh, dinners to the people, and they raised them some money for uh, their their center over there, so you know that was one thing that really went over good. And then uh, we uh, have a, a pass through here for for W. Simmons, and some of them was wondering where that was, and that's up in Hurricane Creek of Johns Creek. And Dovey was uh, she lost most of her property, and her house was in jeopardy of falling over the hill. Jenny, I guess you've been working on this for what two, three years. A long time, and uh, finally we've got a pass-through check here going to her, and and some of the magistrates had asked me where this uh, was going, and uh, that's that's what we're set, uh, real glad to get her taken care of. But uh, another thing is the Joe's Creek. I'm still getting some calls on that break we got up there at the school. Bus won't go over, and we uh, are waiting any day. I guess Frank to get a word on that, and we, and, uh, we uh, you hear any, hear anything about it? Yeah, I had a guy call me today, and I told him as soon as we heard something, we get started on it, and it's not we're putting it off. We're just trying to get some help from uh, some other agencies to get it done. And uh, well, Helen, we got a note from Betty Hard, and we know that she had a major operation and she's recuperating. But, but she was uh, wanted to thank you and Magistrate Harris for what you had done on the Hatfield and McCoy thing. She particularly mentioned you all and everybody else, but she mentioned what all that you all had done to try to further the Hatfield and McCoy. Well, Judge, I thank you, and I want to thank Betty for some things that. That she don't want us to even talk about, but she's been a big plus for for that theater and and things that she's done for it uh, with our uh, scriptwriter and all them. You know, she was really instrumental in telling them a lot of the history that that went in there, and everything worked out real good. And uh, we uh, we have some pictures, and I think the next meeting, Jenny, we need to put them up here of or where we had the lady who wrote it. Next yeah. meeting, make sure that they're on the monitor, and uh, and we uh, and what a job she did in writing that. Go ahead, Magistrate Doc. Judge, that's all I have, and I thank you. And I think you still need to consider that building over across the road because you've been here and seen a lot of things oh, come and go. And I, I, I don't want to. Don't need. Don't need any, my name on anything. All right, thank you. I appreciate it, uh, Magistrate Hire. Judge, I don't have any comments. Thank you. <laughs> other, other than to say, to just kind of echo what Master Dotson said. You know, he Master Dotson had played a big role in the success of that uh, play over there, uh, the past month, and and it came together at the last minute in large part 
uh, because of, of his work and the work that he you know that he he did bringing it all Damus together at the end. Uh, Damus's crew did a great job building the uh, sound uh, uh, sound booth uh, and putting up all the the uh, electrical the sound equipment and the lights and I mean everything that. Everything came together at the last minute, and, and it proved to be a real... But Hillman and Buddy and Davis yes. together, something happened. That's right. That's right. And, and uh, a lot of people uh, played a part in that, but Magistrate Dotson uh, played a, a big role in it, and, and the county work crew did as well. And, uh, the, you know, the, the two groups that... that Mr. County Attorney, I think you have a recommendation. Uh, we're going to go ahead and through. Let's do the... Uh, treasurer's business, and then we'll, we'll let me talk just, about. Let me just the finish this, thing. Judge. The two groups that kind of that kind of that kind of uh, really went out on a limb on this were the uh, Hatfield McCoy Arts Council, which is a new group that Chris Coleman has kind of put together. They kind of spearheaded the, uh, the 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 program, and then also Artist Collaborative Theater from Elkhorn City. I mean, those guys um, traveled all the way traveled from Elkhorn way City to uh, Blackberry. Uh, to, to do the play, and they did a great job, and they're really to be commended uh, for what they've done, the participation that they had. They're a great, great group of people. So, Dr. Hey, you had something to say. You thank you to say. Yes, Judge. Uh, at the last uh, meeting of this court, uh, Magistrate Dodson had uh, inquired uh, <coughs> with regard to the uh, status of the deed of the uh, uh, property over at, on Blackberry, the uh, uh, Phelps area habitat uh, property, as, as this court is aware, that uh, uh, that uh, is no longer going to be an entity, uh, and the uh, the bylaws of that corporation, uh, the corporate charter, and so forth, required that property to go to a uh, nonprofit, uh, a religious uh, uh, based uh, organization. Of course, uh, Pike County could not take it, uh, given the constitutional restrictions in that regard. And uh, as Magistrate Dodson was aware, we had uh, had worked with Pike County Affordable Housing, uh, a, a corporation that does meet the criteria. And uh, Magistrate Dodson, you had uh, inquired about the status of the deed. I got a, a note, uh, I guess I was gone, uh, for the holiday weekend on 8.30 from Baird and Baird, and it says they have the deed ready now. So it's, uh, it's ready to be executed and delivered. So I'm, I think you'll be glad to hear that. John, I will. I've been kind of concerned about the building sitting vacant over there, you know, and uh, I don't know if the caretaker still lives there in the building or not, but we're hoping to get somebody in there and get them moving, and, and I've had a lot of calls on what we're doing on that, and I thank you. Uh, Master Dodson, I will follow up on this in the morning, um, locate the deed, get it to the proper party uh, or parties for signatures, and uh, we, we'll get on that and, and, and get people in possession to protect that property as soon as possible. Madam Treasurer. Authorize any necessary transfers and interfund transfer to pay the bills, payroll, health, and life insurance. Uh, motion. Motion, Master Robin. Second, Master Murphy. Have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dodson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. There were no um, proved transfers and interfund transfers for the August 8th meeting. Authorize the following checks in the amount of to Dovey Simmons pass through the NRCS funds when they're received in the amount of $20,500. Pass Motion. through NRCS funds on Summit Engineering in the amount of seven thousand two hundred when they're received for survey surveying services on Ashley Jones Robinson and Mildred Reed Number Two track on the NRCS authorization. There's a copy of the bill in your packet. The um, to Brad the sign man. 50% down, 25% in installation, and 25% upon satisfaction in the amount of $15,650 for the half right now of $7,825. Walmart, we have to clear up an account that got closed on us and the balance to close it out is $455.06. Dameron's Welding, um, 
He furnished labor and material to put a new bottom in a dumpster, $585. Mike's Critter Castle for a mouse, $2.64. And Hillman had a bill from Evans Construction, uh, Concrete Bridge, Lick Fork of Joe's Creek, um, $28,721. To have a motion. Motion. Judge, I'd like to second that motion and John wants me to, we'll try to catch some in mouses around the barn over and feed that whatever we're feeding them. <laughs> <laughs> what Thank goodness we don't have any more. Y'all call them mouses over in there? Got a motion second. Madam Clerk, have a roll call. Master Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Esther Dotson. Dotson. She didn't hear you. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Reese. Yes. Madam Treasurer. I'll put you on alert the next time we get one of those species in. <laughs> John, I'm telling you, I get him out of the water bucket and fish and uh, horses all the time. I get over there and can't get out. I'll just start saving them, bring them over for that, that uh, snake. <laughs> Authorize the registration and lodging for Charles Carlton to attend the Governor's Conference on Energy and the Environment at the Lexington Convention Center in Lexington, Kentucky on September 17th and 18th, 2013. To have a motion. I have a motion to have a second. Mr. Mer second. Yeah. Mayor Robinson, Robinson, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Reese. Yes. Madam Treasurer, do you have? I have no further business, Judge. Mr. County Attorney, I think you had a recommendation as we go into closed session. Okay, I'll make a motion pursuant to KRS 61810 that we move into executive session, discuss specific personnel matter and pending or threatened litigation. Madam Clerk. Have, have a motion, have a second, have a second, Mr. Johnson, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Johnson, <laughs> Mr. Johnson, yes. Mr. Murphy, yes, Mr. Robinson, yes. Mr. Dotson, yes, Mr. Harris, yes, yes, Judge Reed, yes. Back out of closed session, please. Have a motion, Mr. Robinson, have a second, have a second, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Here. Mr. Johnson. Uh, this is a vote to bring you back to session. Mr. Anderson. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Here. Mr. Dotson. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Yes. Judge Reese. Yes. What's your teaching school? Uh, personnel of Judge Hayes. Very briefly, uh, Judge, we have two matters. Uh, first, approval to hire John Carl Wharf as a temporary replacement truck driver for the Ford Mountain Landfill at a 3H rate of pay, effective August 26, 2013. Uh, Mr. Wharf is temporarily replacing Larry Hensley, who is replacing Johnny Tucker. Uh, next, Judge, we need approval to transfer Ronnie D. Dotson from road, road lot number five as a heavy equipment operator to 5H rate of pay to the Ford Mountain Landfill as a truck driver at a 3H rate of pay per hour, effective uh, August the 5th, 2013, and then terminate uh, Mr. Dotson as of August the 27th, 2013. He was a temporary worker whose job required a CDL, and actually that's the job that Mr. Wharf is going into. So those are the only two matters. That's the personnel's recommendation, Judge. I'll take the recommendation. My recommendation and my motion to have a second, have a second from Mr. Murphy, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Yes. Judge Hayes, would you read the proposed resolution, please? Judge, this is a resolution of the Pike County Physical a physical court regarding the contractual agreements executed between the city of Pikeville, the Pikeville Pike County Regional Airport, and Public Charters Inc., a Pennsylvania corporation. Whereas on August 7, 2012, the Pike County Physical Court, by a 5 
to vote, adopted a resolution approving and in support of a request pending before the Kentucky Department of Local Government of an appropriation of one thousand or one million dollars, excuse me, from the multi-county coal severance tax fund to the city of Pikeville uh, to be used to support the initial profitability and long-term sustainability of an airline which elects to provide service to the Pikeville, Pike County Regional Airport and which meets the strategic needs of both the community and the Eastern Kentucky region. And whereas the physical court continues to support the concept of commercial air service at the Pikeville, Pike County Regional Airport and believes it could be a great benefit to the county, but the court is disappointed and discouraged that it had no meaningful role in the discussions and or deliberations between the city of Pikeville and the Pikeville, Pike County Regional Airport Board and Public Charters, Inc., and whereas the fiscal court expresses serious legal concerns as to the specific verbiage and other issues in the airport use agreement between the Pikeville, Pike County Regional Airport Board and Public Charters, Inc., and in the agreement for air services between the city of Pikeville and Public Charters, Inc., and whereas the fiscal court disputes paragraph one, under recitals in the agreement for air services as it is the sole not joint owner with the city of Pikeville of the Pikeville Pike County Regional Airport under a deed executed on September the 7th 1990 between Dr. W.T. Hatcher Jr. and Pike County Kentucky also the Pike County or the Pikeville Pike County Regional Airport Board not the city of Pikeville, is the operator of the airport. And whereas, while the fiscal court supports commercial air service in Pike County, it has serious reservations about the choice of Public Charters, Inc., a Pennsylvania corporation not licensed to do business in the Commonwealth of Kentucky because Public Charger, Charters, Inc., which bills itself as a tour operator working with charter inventory does not itself own or operate the airplanes that would be in service under its agreement for air service with the city of Pikeville. And whereas one concern of the physical court is that no agreement is in place between the city of Pikeville and corporate flight management, the Tennessee-based company that owns airplanes and would be conducting the actual flights between Pikeville and Nashville, despite having no contractual privity with the city, and whereas the Pike County Fiscal Court is also concerned about the potential liability to the taxpayers of the city of Pikeville, who are also Pike Countyans, represented by the elected members of this fiscal court, because the city of Pikeville, as merely a municipal corporation, does not enjoy the same level of sovereign and or governmental immunity as the county would enjoy it were it a party to the agreement for air services, because the county is an administrative subdivision of the Commonwealth, while the city of Pikeville is not, and is liable for the negligent acts outside the legislative and judicial realms, and now, therefore, be it resolved by the Pike County Physical Court that while this body supports the idea of commercial air service in Pike County, the issues raised herein contain serious and legitimate concerns as to the viability and legal protection of the agreements entered into and previously referenced in this resolution. And we furthermore direct that a copy of this resolution be transmitted to the city of Pikeville and to the Pikeville, Pike County Regional Airport Board. To have a motion. To have a motion to have a second. A motion and a second. Have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. Have a motion to any commissioner or director. I keep forgetting that, folks. And you all, the most important ones here. We get to sit up here and look at you every meeting, and you all and your people do all the good work out in the county. Frankie, we, we have a situation before we close out that uh, AOC 
uh, which there was not anything in the lease that said they had to, to put the, the Hall of Justice back like it was when they leased. But when they was up here, Bobby Branham and Judge Hayes went over there with, uh, with the two, two people here from AOC. And when he got back over here, Vance Mitchell told me that place is a mess. And I said, well, help us get it back some. So they said, well, we will. We'll help you some. So what Frankie's got, he was supposed to call me before this meeting and give me a number, Rhonda, of how much they was gonna, gonna give this court to build that back over there. And uh, he, he hadn't called. So what we wanna do is give Frankie, is that what you're asking for so that you can advertise it if they call us? In the, he'll be here tomorrow. Jeannie, you told me that Vance Mitchell and Brad will be here tomorrow, so I, they'll bring it with them, I'm sure, and tell us the amount of money that they're going to spend on that building, and I'll turn it over to you, because, and Mr. County Attorney, uh, you can, Mr. County Attorney. Go, go ahead, and, and Roland, uh, Judge, I uh, want to just make sure that we're within the bounds of the statute when he... Oh, because I believe that the amount of the repairs are going to exceed $20,000. We need to uh, place those out for bid once we find out what kind of budget that we have to deal with. Right. Uh, I was just asking for permission to bid. He had one permission to bid when tomorrow if they bring the figure up to us. Do I have a motion? Motion. You have a second. Have a second. Have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dodson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Yes. And I want to thank Dan and the others that took the pictures over there that we sent to Frankfurt because that's what they asked for. And, and uh, Vance Mitchell had to go before his budget committee and he said those pictures will tell the story. He don't have to tell one. So I'm hopeful that they will come back with enough money to to put to put that building back, and it's not in our budget this year. We just don't we just don't have the money. But they they've been very cooperative, and uh, of course we built a 34 million dollar building in budget, and uh, they helped on that. Our committee helped on that. So this this is a great opportunity for us to get that building in shape, Charles, when you all move over there and others. I'd just like to say one thing. I should have said it at last meeting or a meeting before. I had the, the pleasure of going up to a play at uh, Elkhorn City, and it was delightful, and I would encourage anyone that has not been to go up there and attend the play. It is a wonderful experience, and those uh, individuals do a great job up there, and I, I had a wonderful time. Would, would, and would you really encourage everyone to Pat support and it, and they would definitely enjoy it. Pat and I saw the same show that uh, Roland and, and that they saw. And it was funny, wasn't it Roland? It was enjoyable. It, you saw some professional acting out of those people at that theater, it was just unbelievable. You, you all have anything else? Any other commissioner, any questions or anything that you want from us? If not, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion, Master Murphy, have a second, have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Murphy, yes. Mr. Robinson, Mr. Dodson, Mr. Harris, Judge Rutherford.